Welcome back to Golden Roll Radio. It is December and we have been off for a couple of weeks, so it kind of feels a little nice to be back here talking to you guys. What would you like to talk about today? Miles wants to talk about politics. I'd rather talk about the metals. So. Miles does not want to talk about <laughs> politics. Let's get into, into gold and silver and your masterful charts where we're sitting on support here if you want to run us through that. Yeah, we've been calling for this pullback in gold for a while. You know, we were hoping uh, a little bit above 1300 before it happened, but we got pretty close. So we're back down to that Fib level 1263. We're looking at some seasonal lows that we definitely want to talk about because we do see a pattern appearing over the last couple years. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't surprise me at all following Thanksgiving, Black Friday sales, a lot of money getting thrown around in retail here in the United States to see the Dow up, the transports up, pushing into the end of the year. Yes, I think that seasonal pattern is the focus of today's show because in December 2015, gold bottomed at 1,050. And we have talked about this a couple times this year on the show. Uh, that was the bottom of gold, 1,050. It then in January rose about 30%, pulled back. And then the next December, December 2016, bottomed at 1125, $75 higher. Here we are again in December, uh, December 2017, and we're in the 1200s. So if you look at this in, in the last three years, you've had the opportunity to buy below, a thou- uh, excuse me, a below 1100 in December, 2015, you had the opportunity to buy below 1200 in December, 2016. When we started this show, January, 2017, we made a call to you to say, this is your opportunity. And I think gold was somewhere in the 1150s, 1170s, right Mm -hmm. into January. We told you that's your opportunity. We're now telling you this is your opportunity again. You've gone a hundred dollars higher each December with this opportunity, and we're sitting here in the 1200s, sitting at a FIB FIB level, if we were to see a little bit more to the downside on this move, we're gonna see in the mid 1200s, maybe going down to 1212 was I think Miles' number, but this is your opportunity. Gold has bottomed the last two Decembers, and here we are in December again, watching it do the same thing, pulling back into the 1200s, and I think come January, you want to be in. It will exceed that $1,300 mark. So your point is this is your opportunity to buy below $1,300. Well, and despite the rampant and very apparent, especially lately, the very apparent rampant manipulation in the precious metals market uh, in the futures contract sell-off, we had, what, $1.5 billion sold off on Monday just this week. Third time in four weeks. Third it's time in the last couple weeks. at least weeks, that amount. Yep. About six, seven billion total, maybe more uh, when you add it all up. So despite having very rampant, very obvious manipulations all throughout these markets, which we do our best to ignore, but you can't deny the fact that they exist. And the fact that we've got the Dow rising substantially over the last couple years, the average person would think to themselves, well, if the Dow's up, gold's down, right? But that certainly hasn't been the case. In fact, with the Dow rising, we've had these pretty substantial moves up in gold, period. So the question then ends up being, if it's doing this well in a rising equity market, what happens when the Dow's turns? Man, good point. Yeah, and those that don't like gold don't want it to have the barometer effect at the end of the year that it often gets. It gets attention, right? If it's up and it finishes up 9% where we are right now on the year, it's going to get news. It would surprise me if we don't finish lower than where we are here personally, just because they have hit it into the final weeks of the of the year in the last two years per Robert's point. However, it, not, it didn't used to be the seasonal trend. It used to be, you know, buy in the summer, sell in the winter because we did see it higher. So maybe that's part of it, but. Yeah, that investor's almanac that people reference is November to May, you know, that six month period is when you want to be in and then sell in May and go away for six months until November picks back up. So we're, we're in that, that phase. Um, the last few years being, you know, stair stepping higher. If you look at the long term trend line, this also supports this, this theory of buying here in the, in this space in the 1200s in December. Um, that long term trim line, if you look from 1050 to the next bottom at 1125, if you extend that trend line out, it comes right into 1200. So you saying, you know, finishing the year a little bit lower than we are, quite possible. But I think that 1200 marker is, is major support. 1212, if you want to get technical on it, that is major support. And so this is your opportunity. 
So what about silver, guys? Is that acting more like an industrial metal? <laughs> right. Copper's down big time at a few month low here, just below $3. And I think you're probably going to see support there with copper. Um, maybe you go lower, but I think that is weighing on the silver and the industrial metals. Well, with transports going down yesterday and copper down over 4%, I mean, that, those to me are, those are huge moves. That was a big transport move down, but sorry, I, I digress, Miles. Yeah, I think with silver, you're looking at that ratio uh, pushing back up to what, 78, 79 to one compared gold, to gold. Gold, silver ratio. Yeah, the gold, silver ratio, uh, how many ounces of one to acquire the other, comparing that to the historic averages. We've talked about this for months. Well, and that's up 7% this year. We started the year at 72 to one. We're now, yeah, 79 to one. If you have an IRA that you don't know what to do with, considering stocks are at a bubble level, looking at silver in an IRA, uh, that makes a lot of sense to buy it at 79 to one with gold, silver, and with silver under $20, it's an opportunity, but with silver under 16 today, wow. So Robert, you called it an, you know, we mentioned the fact that it's an industrial metal. To me, the fact that silver is flat in 2017 tells us with copper's recent downturn, the economy really isn't that healthy. Just because the markets are healthy does not equate to a healthy economy. So keep your eye on those industrial metals, and silver to me is one of those. And gold is telling us that it's a hedge in times of uncertainty. It's up 9%. No surprise that silver's flat with the economy doing what it's doing. Well, and let's be honest, anybody who actually believes that Black Friday sales caused the stock price to go up on the Dow Industrials has no understanding of how the stock market actually works. And how much money there really is out there. Exactly. Exactly. So when you see those price indications take place in the market and you get this lofty opinion or you know the, the warm and fuzzy feeling that, oh, the equity markets not only have been doing great, but look how much money America is spending. That's, that's not how the equity markets work. We're probably going to see the same thing today. You know, again, <laughs> you, you said uh, Miles wants to talk politics. He really doesn't. But by the time this airs <laughs> on Thursday... Uh, you guys listening at home will already know the answer to what Trump's talking about today, especially dealing with uh, potentially moving our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yep. So the question is, are those prices already built into the market? Well, here in a couple hours, we're going to find out how the market reacts to that. Well, and you've already had Conyers retire, and we'll see by this time tomorrow if Al Franken survives the pressures for his resignation. Most likely not. Talking politics, I think what is driving the stock rally here is the hope and hype of this corporate tax reform. And that seems to be kind of wrapping up. So is there some other political or news event that the stock market is going to latch on to and drive it higher? Uh, what is that event? What is that, that political environment? What is that news story that's going to, you know, the stock market is going to grab onto and, and go higher. You might be at that place where you've kind of had this Donald Trump rally this whole year. You've had this, this, you know, hope and hype of Obama, uh, care repeal didn't happen. You had this tax reform, you know, get signed or not signed, but that's, what's been driving it. It's just been news story. So what's next? I mean, Donald Trump signs this tax bill well, then what? I think that's an, a really great question, Robert. And to me, the next step could possibly be infrastructure spending. Mm. Because if you get this one-time repatriation of all these billions and billions of dollars that are held offshore, and we bring those back into the United States, we could minimize the inflationary impact of those dollars if we dumped it directly into infrastructure. That's obviously very economically stimulated. So that's my theory. I'm not predicting that. I'm just answering your question. Yeah, that's good. So you can't separate out the politics before we leave this, this subject from what they do. And their impact on our economy really comes in the form of trade deficits and debt. You know, And the, the trade deficit increased almost $49 billion on record imports in October. And so we continue to see some of the same. Now, granted, U.S. exports are up 5.3% this year. So credit Trump for that or, or the politicians in Washington. But a $463 billion trade deficit so far this year. And that equates in part to the reason that we have a $671 billion increase in the U.S. debt. That, my friends, is what we need to keep our eye on. As long as the debt continues to swell and they continue hiding these expenditures in these tax bills and, and budgets and, and raising of the, of the ceiling, to me, that's the long-term picture that still has yet to play out. 
Well, and it's funny you bring up the repatriation of assets under the new tax bill. What are dozens of billions of dollars coming back into the country in comparison to trillions of dollars of overspending every year? Well, it's no longer fall here in Colorado. I know that it's cold. And so we hope that you guys have a warm time going to some of these Christmas parties you're probably going to, you know, start of the holiday season. Make sure that you tell people that you appreciate them. And finally, for recommendations this week, uh, coming into the end of the year and then looking at tax season coming up next year, retirement accounts, IRAs, putting money away for your future is definitely forefront on all of our clients' minds and a lot of our listeners as well. So if you have not set yourself up for your distributions this year, if you haven't set up a plan uh, for getting money into your retirement accounts before April 15th of next year, give us a buzz, shoot us an email. We'll walk you through how to do some of that. Robert mentioned the value of owning some silver in your IRA earlier today. We can talk you through why that's such a good idea. And I'd also add to that, we're still touting platinum. I think platinum is still an outstanding, and especially within IRA, outstanding investment opportunity to complement the silver. I concur. So give us a call at 800-525-9556. You can also hit the subscribe button below and follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Thanks for listening. Merry Christmas. And have a good week.